service this morning is the voter users right to beginning on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your bulletin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be the kingdom, now and forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the, appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey he proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Thus he ties the two together. 
Now there's, I'll point out a little technicality here. There's always something in, in our scriptures that, that you've got to explain, I think. And if you're paying attention, you might have noticed that Mark's quote from Isaiah is different than what you read today from the actual book of the prophet. In fact, that first part, part says, see, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you. Well, that, that actually comes from the prophet Malachi. It's the beginning of the church, third chapter of the book of Malachi. But regardless of that minor discrepancy, you can keep that in mind for any of your biblical trivia contests. <laughs> Across that minor, the point is the same. You see, John the Baptist is proclaiming the same message as all those prophets who were before him. So by doing this, Mark is telling us that the story of God's love begun in creation is ongoing. Just as we were told, foretold long ago, God's story now takes it anew with the good news of Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of God. Now, if you study Scripture at all, the time gap between the Old and New Testaments is familiar to you. But in our reading from Isaiah chapter 40, we encounter a similar gap in time. Scholars have noted a considerable gap of time between Isaiah 39 and Isaiah 40. You see, in Jack, in chapters 1 through 39, the prophet gives a warning that if all the people do not repent and return to the Lord, then Jerusalem will fall to its enemies. Of course, we know from history that's exactly what happened. 587 B.C., the Babylonian army defeated Israel. They took most of the population and all of the leadership into captivity in Babylon. And Israel lived in exile for 48 years. Isaiah 39 was written about Israel's impending doom. <coughs> Chapter 9, verse 6 says, Days are coming when all that is in your house and that which your ancestors have stored up until this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, says the Lord. Now this particular prophecy didn't make Isaiah very popular, you see. But of course, that's the price of being a prophet. The people of Israel had assumed that as God's chosen people, God would protect them from any serious harm. Surely God would not let them fall into the hands of the enemy. Yet the prophets warned that the people were to repent, to turn away from sin and turn Turn back to God. Prophets warned that unless Israel acted like the people of God that they were created to be, that they would not receive God's protection. And when Jerusalem did fall to the Babylonians, that brought great social, political, and theological tragedy. After all, how do we how do we know what God loves and cares for us? When we see all we care about crumbling around. Where is God when our dreams lie smashed at our feet? These are the same sort of questions we, we still ask today when tragedy comes. You know, like, for instance, when a pandemic affects the lives of people everywhere, when it seems that God may be absent. So following the crushing reality of defeat at the hands of the Babylonians, we move to chapter 40 in Isaiah. This is the beginning of what scholars refer to as second Isaiah. And it's a very different word from God. In the midst of all the distress created by defeat in battle and the long exile in a foreign land, God sends the prophet to now call out, comfort, oh comfort my people. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid. Following these comforting words, Isaiah sows the seeds of a new vision, the words that will later be connected to the opening of Mark's gospel we read from today. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make 
going straight to the desert, the highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, <clears throat> rough places of plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. Now, these are words meant to energize a weary, dejected people. In effect, Isaiah is saying that God, we can do what seems impossible. Then Isaiah goes on with a not too comforting message, reminding us of how transitory human life is from God's perspective. That's all people of grass. The constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, and the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. Well, so at this point we might ask, what is permanent? What can we really count on? Well, Isaiah answers that question. And here the prophetic word changes its sin. The grass withers, the flower fades. The word of our God will stand forever. And so it is. This word of God endures for all time. And it is this enduring word of God that Isaiah then builds upon to reinvigorate Israel and to exhort them to acknowledge that they are God's people and that they can rebuild Jerusalem and restore Israel. We hear, get you up, lift up your voice, lift it up, do not fear. And that is what those people in that place and at that time needed to hear. And the psalm we read today is a response to that message. It's a celebration of hope. It's praise that expresses joy for a return from exile and a new beginning. In psalm 85, God is available and accessible. God is speaking peace, pardoning, restoring God's people. God's people are not alone. And when the people know this, they are, well, they're transformed. They're energized. You know, many, many part, parts of the church today very much to need to hear God's word in the same way that Isaiah addressed Israel. People need to hear a voice that is comforting and tender, but also inspiring. In the church today, like in Israel, all those years ago, much has been lost. Much needs to be built. Leaders and people are sometimes weary, sometimes despairing. So what needs to be said again and again is that God is with us, whatever the situation. We possess everything that any former age possessed. We possess the word of God, the sacramental food and drink of God, the presence of the Holy Spirit of God, and the presence of the risen Christ. So what we must build in the church today is not the same as the Jerusalem that had to be rebuilt 2,500 years ago, but the need to build it is the same. Mark makes it very clear that in those days people were coming from all over the Judean countryside and from Jerusalem to listen to that strange figure of John the Baptist out there in the wilderness. People must have hungered for things of the Spirit, wondering what could make life worthwhile, what would make possible a life with meaning. And what did they hear? They heard of someone else someone greater. One is, who is more powerful than I is coming after me, he says. In the lives of all, all the great Christians who the centuries point to one greater than themselves. Jesus Christ. And so should our lives as well. Amen.
of the world and for our unity in Christ. <coughs> for Shannon, our bishop, Liz, our priest, Laura, our postulant for holy orders, and all who minister in Christ, and for all the holy people of God. Amen. For the church throughout the world and the faithful in every place. For the leaders of the nations and all in authority. For justice, peace, and freedom in the Ukraine, Israel, Palestine, and all among peoples of the earth. For travelers, for the sick, and suffering, especially Helen, Ron and Dean, Jody, Carla, Jerry, Betsy, Bill, Lynn, Pauline, Andrew, Belinda, Jack, Robert, Cheryl, Aaron, Howard, Steen, Gina, and baby Natalie, for the hungry and the oppressed, and for those in prison. Come on, Lord, 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 Lord. For the dying and the dead, this week we remember Marvin, Jerry, Millie, Margaret, Dottie, Amy, and Asher. Come For our deliverance from all affliction, strife, and need. Come on, Lord, Joining our voices with the Blessed Virgin Mary and with all the saints and angels of God, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. To, to you, Lord. He of David, scepter of the house of Israel, who opens and none can shut, who shuts and none can open, come and free the captives from prison, who sit in darkness and the shadow of death. Glory to you forever. Amen. Let's confess our sins before God.
keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
grace of that heavenly country, for with the ever blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, you may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as I say to Christ who taught us, your will be said.